Welcome back everyone. Well, you may remember her from earlier this week. Sleep specialist Christine Pedersen is here with us for our final day of sleep week and today we are focusing on our sleep environment and how it affects the quality of our sleep. We're talking about what is around us and maybe our bedroom when we're going to sleep at night and you get a lot of questions about all sorts of things, yes. but let's start with one that you get often is, you know, I'm so tired. I go into bed and then I just can't fall asleep. What do I do? Right, so many of us are actually missing our sleep window. So we feel tired after dinner, our eyes might feel dry, our lids might feel heavy, we might even be nodding off and we push through and then we end up getting the second burst of energy, our second wind, yes, right? Yes. And then there we are laying in bed and our maybe we, we look to our cell phone, uh -huh. right? Never <laughs> to, done that, I've never done that. To entertain us, right? <laughs> or even an exciting book. Or our brain starts reeling about the things that we've got going on tomorrow mm -hmm. or in the world. And that can be really disruptive for our sleep. And we've gotten that second wind and it just keeps chugging along. So I encourage people to have very dark rooms. I encourage people to put their cell phones away from See, to charge it, just grab it someplace oh, okay. else. Yes, and the, I mean, the cell phone is, is terrible for blue light, but it's also exciting. It's intellectually stimulating, it's in emotionally stimulating. In fact, all screens are, right? So whether you're watching a show or um, scrolling on social media, it can be really distracting. So get those things out of the room. Any electronics, any lights that blink or beep can be disturbances as well. A cool room is also mm -hmm. um, environmentally beneficial. So. Um, those of you who are heating your house to like 72 degrees in the winter, you can drop the thermostat <laughs> down a little bit um, because our body needs warm, lots of warm blankets and to feel cozy, but a cool temperature environmentally. Well, I know that, you know, scheduling and staying on a schedule is, is a good thing, especially yeah. when it comes to children, but we're getting ready to get into the holidays where we're all over the place. We might be traveling to grandma's house. We're out of school. We have vacation. What do we do to stay on track? Right, so for adults, I just remind everyone that it's really important to, um, even if you get off for a couple of nights, to try to get to bed early. Again, don't push through those tired signs. If you're feeling tired at 9.30 most days and you push through and don't get to bed till midnight, maybe give yourself the gift of going to bed at 9.30. Get ready, do your routine, and then get in bed. Put your head on the pillow when it's tired and let yourself go to sleep to catch up. For kids, it's a different story. They need, they still need naps. If you skip a nap, you almost have to get them to bed an hour to an hour and a half early. Mm -hmm. So that's hard, hard to do for kids. We tend to overbook the holidays. So I really ask my clients who are struggling with sleep, wouldn't you be happier if you said no to some of the events and some of the things that tend to stress us out over the holidays and you had more energy and felt better rested for those things yeah. you're prioritizing. It's very hard to say no during the holidays. We we all want to enjoy that one last holiday potluck and um, you know, get up early to stand in line for photos with Santa and <laughs> uh, it's I, I ask my clients to really check what they want to do, make a priority list. Um, we oftentimes have because of travel and how and or even family visiting, we have a lot more emotional things to deal with as well. So sometimes I'm actually um, encouraging my adult clients to do what I call a brain dump. So at night before you go to bed, or even if you wake up in the middle of the night and you can't get back to sleep, get up and write down all the things that's on your mind. Just a quick bulleted list of everything on your mind. And, uh, and sometimes even have, have parents or, or adults or having like teenagers get up and drink a cup of tea. Hmm. Calms you down, it warms you up, and you can crawl back into bed and go back to sleep. So that can be helpful too. Lots of good advice for us this morning as usual. Thank you so much, Christine Patterson. We appreciate it. It is 749 now. Stay with us. We'll be back with more Creme 2 Morning News here on the CW22.